am just waiting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And when it tells me I'm actually live. I hope I'm live. I hope I'm live. I hope I'm live. Yay, I'm live. Good job. All right, I was just making sure that I am live before I start talking. Hi, Patricia. So good to see everyone. Wow, has it been an amazing two weeks. I can't believe that I have been away from you for two weeks, but I am thankful to be back today. I didn't want to start, uh, I didn't want to start today uh, with, I didn't want to come back with Ezekiel chapter 29, first of all. Each chapter I spend days studying before I uh, bring those chapters to you because they're deep, very deep, and I have not had a full revelation on chapter 29 yet, and I want to make sure I do have that before I bring it to you. But I have these two verses that's been rolling around in my spirit for over a month now, and if you're in communication with me, uh, for instance, if you are in the school of worship anytime, you should be communicating with me at least once a week. I should be getting an email from you with your progress telling me I'm on chapter so-and-so in, chap in what, this book, and I, I took away these things from that chapter. Only a few people do it, even though I tell every student who comes through my schools that I want to hear from you as you continue to do your work when you leave the school. Uh, I have a few not very many who are actually continuing. I'm not saying that you're not doing your book, but you're not communicating with me. So if you're listening, I want to be hearing from you. I gave you my email, my private email on purpose. It's because I want to stay in connection with you. I want to stay in communication with you. I want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you. And so Welcome today, and also welcome, please keep doing your homework, and please keep emailing me, and if you haven't started, there's no condemnation, and there's no shame, just begin. I would like to hear, if you've already done 10 chapters, and you've not sent me any emails, then give me a synopsis of those 10 chapters, and how the Lord is speaking to you, how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It just keeps you in the school, even when we have distance between us. So hi, Laura. Hi, Martha. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Jean. Hi, Rhonda. See, all of you are all from the school. And so I want to make sure I'm hearing from you. I have a lot of prayer requests since it's been two weeks, but I'm not going to jump into prayer until the very end. I want to remind you, if you are not uh, or haven't, recently uh, ordered anything from our website i'm going to remind you of this pearl bracelet that says bent but not broken reminding you that you are the beautiful pearl of great price god's word for us but in so many ways we are the pearl of great price for him his word is for us holy spirit is for us so many wonderful things it just reminds us of that and then if you don't have your pray bracelet i have just a few more in my inventory. If you don't have your pearl ring or your cross ring, or if you don't have your little pearl earrings, I have just a few more of this one that says, blessed beyond belief. And so I love that one with the little pearls hanging on it. So many pieces of jewelry, don't forget, they're great gifts. And uh, don't forget, Women of the Nation Pray. This one I'm bringing out today because I cannot shake these two verses the Spirit of God has me uh, meditating on, and I want to make sure I bring them to you. I didn't even check my piano. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is, working. Wanted to make sure. I turned it all on, but I was in such a hurry to bring you the word. I was so blessed to get to go to Hawaii with my husband, first time on a flight, glory to God, and we went to Maui to be with our precious pastor friends, great supporters of our ministry for many years, Pastor Rocky and Pastor Bobby LaRocco at the Word of Truth Church under the Lord team, the Lord's Team Ministries. I did her uh, leadership and her staff women's conference, and then uh, Harry and I preached on Mother's Day there. 
wow, we just love them. We had the most amazing time with them, most amazing time in the Spirit of God. Then we flew back home, changed out our suitcases, washed clothes, packed again, and went to Mississippi, where Mississippi State University honored me as the alumnus of the year from the School of Education. I met some amazing people, and I made some amazing new friends for life. I, uh, of course, Trish Canetto, I think had, uh, she was the divine conduit by the Holy Ghost and set the whole thing into motion uh, when I met with her back in the fall. And then she went to Dean J. Rowe, who is also an amazing woman. And I just am so thankful to see these wonderful Christian ladies and, and in such leadership roles as they are in and to see the hand of God on them ordering their steps. Also met the new uh, department head of the music department at Mississippi State, Dr. Stevens, and got to spend a little time with him because they uh, had a reception in my honor at the new music building. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me give a little musical presentation and a little word of thanks to all of them and all of the people that came thank you so much for coming to the reception we had a wonderful afternoon didn't we i think i looked in every inch of that new music building and i and prayed over it too uh met our, our uh, old friend went to school with her uh 45 years ago elva k in the band department also wonderful tour thank you elva cage what a great blessing it was so i'm just thanking all of you uh those of you who came charlie i saw you on sunday hey good to see you and kendy good to see you too charlie brought a whole group of his family and relatives to a sunday service we were with dudley and lucy nash at North Mississippi Worship Center. And I just have to say this one thing. It, it was such a blessing to me. Uh, we had meals, we had a luncheon, uh, we had the reception, we also had a dinner at Mississippi State University. And we did not eat a bite until someone stood up and prayed over the meal and prayed it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just remind you that that is the right of this nation. And I am so blessed that my home state of Mississippi still even in these natural settings of uh, universities are still praying in the name of Jesus Christ and I, my hat is off to you I applaud you and I believe heaven applauds you for standing your ground in this great nation that we have the right and the rest of us keep pushing where we are keep pushing in prayer keep when others will not stand in prayer, let's continue to stand for America. Let's continue to stand for righteousness to be restored. And I want to talk to you today about how to do that. If you don't have Women of the Nation Pray, you need to get this book because a lot of what, uh, not these particular verses or maybe what I'm going to say today, but a lot of how to pray legally in the court of heaven is, in, is within this book. Many, many scriptures on how to pray for America are already written out in the back. Uh, Lord, we speak in the authority of Jesus Christ that we have all authority in heaven and on earth. We will go into this nation first with our prayers and intercession and take this land for the name of Jesus Christ. Next, we will obey the Spirit of God and do what needs to be done to reverse the curse over America and set this land back in position of God's authority. We will make disciples in this nation and America will be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit once again. There is no doubt that America has one God, one Lord, and one Savior. His name is Jesus the Christ. We proclaim it as we give witness testimony in the court of heaven before you, our righteous judge. That's just one of many pages of prayers you can pray over America. And the final statement in the book is America shall be saved. And if you're watching and America is not the nation that you are representing, then you can take the same exact verses from the scripture that are written from the scripture and you can put your nation into those prayers. We need to be standing and praying for our nation. Hi Tammy, hi Miss Sims or C. Sims, hi um, Margie Wells, my dearest friend over in Missouri. So good to see all of you. Yes, it is rare and thank you Jesus. 
we can still pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our triune God. And right there in the music department, I uh, started off my presentation with Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty Early in the morning my song shall rise to Thee Holy, Holy, Holy Merciful and Mighty God in three persons Blessed Trinity Right there on the grounds of a state university we sang and I had my family who was there to stand up and we sang it in parts and harmonies and then I did uh, the song that I wrote I love you Lord you know that one is the last one on the warriors follow me I love you Lord Did Don't Cry Out Loud, which is the song that I sang at Miss America 44 years ago by special request. So it was a fun day and a wonderful opportunity. Hi, Cynthia. Thanks for joining me. Now, let's jump into a scripture that has been in my spirit for a while now, and I have not been able to shake it. So I thought, okay, Lord, I really believe you want me to present this today. If you have your Strong's Concordance, I want you to uh, open it. And uh, it is right on my phone. Now, I do have um, a massive Strong's Concordance. It's really large and a little bit hard to uh, find, but I have my Strong's Concordance on my phone. And so I want us to jump in to verse uh, 17 in chapter 54 of the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to mark right here. Uh, I'm using my Spirit Fill Life Bible, and I'm also using my old Amplified Classic Bible. And if anyone finds this Bible anywhere, not the AMP, but the old Amplified Classic Bible, please let me know where you find it. I would love to purchase another copy because mine is uh, very, very old, and I would love to um, start a new one. So I'm going to jump into Isaiah 54, verse 17 and I want to talk to you about how to present your defense your case legally in the court of heaven before God the righteous judge now you have to understand we have the defense his name is Jesus Christ he's our advocate he's our defender he's our protector and when we go to court in the court of heaven, you know Jesus is already seated at the right hand of the Father. But when we go into court, into the court of heaven, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. When we enter those courts with praise, we are praising first Father God, but we're also praising Jesus who is our defense. And then we're also praising Holy Spirit triune God because he is our co-counsel. We find that in the Amplified Translation in John chapter 14. He is our co-counsel. He represents Jesus on the earth and he represents us with Jesus in the court of heaven. So you never go to court even when the devil accuses you, even when he uses your own words against you which you need to be very careful what you say so you don't give the devil an opportunity to drag you to court with your own words. But when that happens and you go to court, you never go alone. You go with Jesus as your defense and you go with the Holy Spirit as co-counsel. Now, please make sure that you have not said things that have to be 
stricken from the record when you get into the courtroom of heaven because that is one of the first things the Lord has taught me is that we can plead the blood of Jesus. We never plead innocent for we are not. But because of the blood of Jesus, we can present covered in the blood and we can present ourselves as pleading the blood of Jesus so that we don't have to say guilty and we don't ever lie in the court of heaven and say innocent. For if we are being accused, it is generally because we have said something that has given the accuser the right to accuse us before the righteous judge. So that's when we plead the blood of Jesus and we ask, can what has been brought as an accusation against us, may it be stricken from the record as we plead the blood of Jesus over it and we ask for forgiveness. Uh, 1 John 1, 9 says we have an advocate with the Father. That's the righteous judge, the Father. And we have an advocate with him and we can go before the righteous judge with the advocate Jesus and he will stand in the gap for us. Just to flip right over to 1 John 1, 9 for just a moment so that you can see that you have a right to go into the court of heaven, 1 John 1, 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins. He will dismiss our lawlessness and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. Oh, glory to God. Because of Jesus Christ, you can go up and read verse 7. But if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself, Jesus, is in the light we have true unbroken fellowship with one another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses removes us from all sin and guilt keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations verse 8 if we say we have no sin refusing to admit that we are sinners we delude and lead ourselves astray and the truth which the gospel represents is not in us does not dwell in our hearts if we freely admit that, verse 9, we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the advocate that we have through Jesus Christ, 1 John 1, verse 9. Now jump back over to Isaiah 54, 17. And we're going to read this. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified Bible. And then we are going to jump into the Strong's and take it apart word for word to see exactly what it means to us. Hopefully you've already downloaded the Strong's Concordance app on your phone and or on your computer and you've opened it up and you see at the top where it gives you a place to put in right up here what book you want, which is Isaiah. And then when you click on that, it'll give you how many chapters it has. Click on 54. And then when you click on 54, it'll give you 1 through 17 verses. And you click on 17, and that verse comes up with all of the words underlined that we have since we're in the Old Testament. They're in Hebrew. And so it's going to give you what each and every word actually means in its full definition so that we can legally understand the depth of of the Word of God. Now, this is not about reading three chapters a day and reading through the Bible in a year. That's wonderful if you want to do that, and that's great, but that's not how you study. That's how you read the Word. I'm not talking to you about reading the Word today. I'm talking to you about studying the Word of God, and you cannot do that in a hurry. You have to slow it down and realize that the Word is not written horizontally, but it is written vertically. It has depth in it, and you want to make sure that when you're studying the Word so that you understand every right that you have legally to come into the court of heaven, that you have access to the ways to study and access to the moments that the Holy Spirit's going to bring something to your remembrance. Now, let's first stop and pray. Holy Spirit,
We thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you illuminate our minds, our spirit minds, and allow us to see what we have never seen before, which is called revelation. Thank you, Lord, for revelation of God's word and to show us legally how to approach God and his throne as the righteous judge and as we come before him to legally present our cases using his word as our defense. As Jesus defends us and Holy Spirit co-counsels us, we thank you, Lord, for illuminating our mind with light so that our spirit mind can see and then our natural mind can comprehend and we can present ourselves holy, complete, H-O-L-Y, holy and righteous before the righteous judge forgiven and cleansed from all unrighteousness as we plead the blood of Jesus in the court of heaven. We do not plead innocent. We do not plead guilty. We plead the blood. Thank you, Father, for revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, hopefully that's given you enough time to find your uh, scripture, Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Let me read it to you first from the Amplified Translation. But, now that but is a conjunction. It means that everything that was just said is tied to the next phrase, but if it had said and, both would have been important. What was before the conjunction would have been important and what is after the conjunction would have been important. But when the conjunction but is used, it means that most everything said prior to this conjunction but is now irrelevant. All that matters is what's coming after it. So, for instance, Harry can say, Cheryl, you are wonderful and I love you with my whole heart, but... Uh Uh-oh, I I missed everything he said before the but. All now I'm tuned into is what's coming after the but because he's about to disqualify everything he said before the but with what's coming after. So let's see. Uh, We start with um, verse 16 just so we can see a little bit of what's before it. Uh, I, I love verse 14. It says, you shall establish yourself on righteousness right in conformity with God's will and order, you shall be far even from the thought of oppression or destruction, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. I love that verse. That's why I wanted to read it. Of course, I'd like to go up one more, too, and just give you hope for your children and your grandchildren, and all your spiritual children shall be disciples. <gasps> You are my spiritual children and my natural children too and my natural grandchildren and all your children shall be disciples taught of the Lord. You are being taught not just by me but by the Lord for he is instructing me in how to teach you. Holy Spirit is giving you ears to hear what the Spirit is saying not what I'm saying as much as what he is saying. You shall be taught of the Lord, obedient to his will, and great shall be your peace and undisturbed composure that is of my children, of my spiritual children, which many of you are, of my natural children, and of my natural grandchildren. That's when he goes on to say, you shall establish yourself on righteousness. You see, this is not fairy dust. This is not asking somebody to pray that I will be established in righteousness. No, you shall establish yourself. This is up to you. You choose whether you're established in righteousness or not. You are in right, in conformity with God's will and order. That's up to you, you see. You shall establish yourself. Then you shall be far. When you are established in righteousness, then you shall be. This is an if-then equation here. If you establish yourself in righteousness, in right, in conformity with God's will and with God's order, then you shall be far even from the thought of oppression, even from the thought of destruction, for you shall not fear. You see, when you're established on righteousness, you will not fear. Wow, how do I get rid of fear? I fill myself up with the righteousness of God until there is no more room for fear. You will be far from terror, for it shall not come near you. Behold, they may gather together and stir up strife, but it is not from me, says the Lord. Whoever stirs up strife against you shall fall away to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Behold, I have created the smith who blows on the fire of coals and who produces a weapon for its purpose, and I have created the devastator to destroy. You want to know where the devil came from? You know right there. God said, I created the devastator, and I created him to destroy. Now, that did not come first. First, he was the head of worship. But then sin was found in him because of his own choice to have pride instead of reflect the glory back to God. He took the glory and the glory corrupted him because it was not meant for him. And when he took the glory, it corrupted his heart. Pride was found in him. And he went from being the lead worshiper, the head of all worship to God. He went from that position as the destroyer and the devastator and then because of that he was meant to destroy now but so no matter what he just said that this destru this devastator to destroy is definitely in the world but god said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. So it doesn't matter that the world has a devastator. It doesn't matter that the devastator destroys. It doesn't matter that people stir up stuff against you, that they stir up strife against you, that they lie against you. Whoever stirs up strife against you shall fall away, says the Lord. Yeah, that's how much he loves you. Now, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Now, I want to look that word up right there, and I want to keep reading, but I want to make sure we read through what that word means. No weapon. Let's see what that word weapon means. It is the Strong's number, Hebrew 3627, and if you have your uh, Strong's app open, you just click on, it says no weapon, and it says H for Hebrew. In the New Testament, it says G for Greek. H is for Hebrew, 3627. You click on it, and it gives you the pronunciation of the word kele, keli, and it comes from the Hebrew word 3615. Now, we'll come back and see what word it comes from. Something prepared that is an apparatus as an implement, a utensil, a dress, a vessel, or weapon. Armor, armor bearer, artillery, bag, carriage, furnish, furniture, instrument. Uh-oh. You don't yield your instrument, Romans 6, 13, to wickedness, but you yield your instrument to righteousness. When you yield your instrument to wickedness, now the devil is playing you, and you're going to be saying things, you're going to be sounding things that are a weapon in the devil's hand against God's people, and you do not want to be doing that. That instrument, a jewel that is made of one from another that has pertaineth, a uh, sultry sack, stuffed thing, tool, vessel, ware, weapon, plus whatsoever. In the King James Version, it is used as the word vessel, instrument, weapon, jewel, armor bearer. Now, this is where we've gotten this before, that your instrument is a weapon, it is a jewel, it is a vessel, it is an armor bearer. It is an armor, it is armor bearer, and it's also armor. So you are a in weaponed, you are an armored weapon instrument when you are walking in righteousness. You're also an armored, weaponed instrument in the hand of the devil when you yield to wickedness. When you get your mind off and you start walking in your soul realm and you allow your emotions to lead you instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, you're going to say things you will regret and you wish you wouldn't have said them because now the devil has something legal to drag you into the court of heaven because you've said things out of emotion, out of pain, out of hurt, out of grief, whatever caused you to say the wrong thing, it doesn't matter the cause, the devil still has then an armored, weaponed instrument sound from you that he drags you into court and says, they said, you said, and once you've said it, it has power. And so that power is what the devil uses against you. You said that I thought I would die. You said that nearly killed me. You said, oh my goodness, the things that we say. That nearly scared me to death. 
Don't be saying stupid stuff. Don't give the devil anything to drag you into court over. Oh, how about, I'll never succeed at this. I don't think I'm in the right place. Stop those silly things. If you cannot say the right thing, say nothing at all until you learn how to speak by the power of the Holy Spirit and righteousness. Catch yourself when you say the wrong thing. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you an unction of the Holy Spirit, that little nudge that says, shut up, shut it. You have the right to remain silent right now. You need to shut it until you can speak faith, until you can talk the word, until you can quote scripture, shut it. Because everything you say can and will be used against you in the court of heaven by the accuser of the brethren. Now, vessel, instrument, weapon, jewel, armor bearer, armor, furniture, carriage, bag, miscellaneous. Woo. Okay, now let's also click on, if you're on this page with me, let's click on 3615, the Hebrew word in the Strong's 3615. As we click, click on that, it is the word kala, kala. It's spelled K-A-L-A-H, but it's pronounced K-A-W-L-A-W, kala. The definition, it's a primitive root to end whether intransitively, to cease to finish perish or transitively to complete, prepare, consume, accomplish, cease, consume away, determine, destroy, be, when, were, done, be an end of, expire, cause to fail, faint, finish, fulfill, fully, have, leave, off, long, bring to pass, holy, reap, make clean, riddance, spend, quite, take away, waste. It means consume, end, finish, fail, accomplish, done, spend, ended, determined, away, fulfill, faints, destroy, left, waste, etc. Now, that's what the word weapon means. Wow. Consume, end, finish. The whole point when the devil comes at you with a weapon, that's his point. He's trying to consume you, to finish you off, to leave nothing of you. But God says here, but no weapon. That is formed. The word formed is the Strong's Hebrew 3335, and it means yostar, yostar. Probably identical with 3334 through the squeezing into shape. Compare 3331 to mold into a form, especially as a potter. So no weapon that is formed. So it is squeezed into shape. It is formed, which is what we say. Your words are building your future. Your words are forming tomorrow for you. What you say today, you live tomorrow because your words are forming. They're building something. Now let's jump on. I could spend hours, as you can tell here. Let's go on, against thee shall prosper. So, but no weapon that's meant to destroy you, that is formed, that is built against you shall prosper. One of my favorite Hebrew words. It's Hebrew number 6743, and it's a primitive root to push forward in various senses, literally or figuratively, trans transitively or intransitively. It means to break out, come mightily, so break out mightily, go over, be good, be meet, be profitable, cause to affect, make to sin, prosper, prosperous, prosperity, prosperously, prosper, come, prosperous, come mightily, effected, good, meet, break out, went over, and so many other words. Now, what does that actually mean to us? This means that no weapon that is formed against you shall break out. It'll not break out. It is meant to take you down, but it's a weapon that's formed against you and because you are established yourself in righteousness, because you're established in righteousness, 
No weapon the devil comes or uses against you. Nothing that he uses against you. No word, no strife, not what other people say, not even what you have said when you, 1 John 1, 9, you ask the Lord to forgive you from all righteousness and you ask him to strike your words from the record. When you do that, I know I'm taking this apart, but I want you to understand the power of your sound as an armored instrument weapon in the hands of God, or when you allow the devil to play you, you are an armored weapon instrument in the devil's hands. We don't want to ever do that. So don't yield yourself to wickedness. Only yield to righteousness. How do you make sure you always do that? Stay in the spirit. For those who walk in the spirit, are called sons and daughters of God. Stay in your eternal nature and stay as far away from your carnal nature as possible. And when you stay away from your carnal nature, you can control your tongue. James chapter 3 says it's impossible to control this natural tongue. So what is happens to us when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we're given a new tongue, a tongue of fire, and our language changes, and we stop talking like earth, and we start talking like heaven. The one language that you can trust when you are hurting, when you are weeping, when you are grieving, when you are being attacked, when you're in pain, you can trust your heavenly language. You can sing, you can worship God, you can you see i can trust that language for it's my heaven language and the spirit of god is actually speaking through me I'm yielding myself to righteousness and the Spirit of God now can use my sound to say every defense term that I need to stand in the court of heaven. Can I trust my carnality? I cannot. Can I even trust my emotions? I cannot. But I can trust the Spirit of God. I can trust my spirit man who is completely yielded to the Spirit of God when I speak in my heavenly language and I yield my instrument to the sound of heaven. So I hope that makes sense. So let's read it this way. So no weapon that is formed against you shall break through to success. No weapon. No matter what, it comes from demonic realm, it comes from the devil himself, it comes from people. Nobody attacking you shall break through to success. It's not going to happen. Doesn't mean you're not going to be attacked. You definitely will be. Jesus said in this world, John 16, verse 33, you will have trouble, trial, frustration, and distress, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. He has given you the defense necessary. When you stay in righteousness and you establish yourself in righteousness through the blood covenant of Jesus Christ, you come into the court of heaven, you plead the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. This is exciting, isn't it? I, I should be looking at your comments, but what I've done is I'm over in my strong, so I can't see them. I'll jump over there in just a moment as we finish up this verse. I've probably already gone way too long and I'm only on one verse. This shall break through to success and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, that word judgment is the Strong's number, Hebrew 4941, and as I click on it, it says a verdict. In other words, someone tries to bring a verdict against you. The righteous judge is the only one that can pronounce verdict on you. Remember, he says, vengeance is mine. Vindication is also him. He is the one who vindicates through his righteous verdict for us. Uh, it comes from the Hebrew uh, Strong's number 8199, properly a verdict, favorable or unfavorable, pronounced judicially, legally, 
especially a sentence or formal decree, human or particularly divine law, individual or collectively, including the act, the place, the suit, the crime, and the penalty. Wow, there's so many definitions. I hope you're looking at it on your strongs, and I don't have time to keep going, but each and every word, you can break it apart. And my favorite says that you shall show to be in the wrong. Or the uh, King James says, you shall show. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You shall show that they are in the wrong. That is the primitive root. Uh, from a primitive root, it is the word rasha. And it means to causatively do, declare that they are wrong. You have the right to stand up and say, no, that is not the truth. The spirit of truth is in me, and the spirit of truth will testify on my behalf that this is truth. That is a lie. I am not that. I refuse to be that, for I am covered in the blood of Jesus. I am no longer guilty, for I have the blood of Jesus. I go freely before my Father, and I ask for forgiveness, and he cleanses me from all unrighteousness. So you see how we fight legally in the court of heaven. I know I'm going fast through this, but there's so much in it. Uh, this is the heritage. This is your heritage. You have won this in the legal system of the court of heaven because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And now because of Jesus Christ, we are sons and daughters, not just servants, but sons and daughters. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And I love the fact that the word righteousness there is the Hebrew word 6666. <gasps> Glory to God. The number of the the Antichrist is 666, but righteousness is 6666. And it means right, rightness, rectitude, objective, morally, morally virtuous, and prosperity, justice, moderately right, righteous, righteousness, the act of righteousness, the act of rightly and righteousness, justice, right, righteous acts, moderately and righteously. Glory to God. What an amazing word. Now, I'll just read the rest of it and then we're going to flip over to Deuteronomy 21 and just close up this day's teaching. This peace, righteousness, security, triumph over opposition. You have peace, you have security, you have righteousness, you have triumph over opposition. You can never be defeated for you have already won through the blood of Jesus Christ is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, those in whom the ideal servant of the Lord is reproduced. Jesus is reproduced in you. This is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtain from me, says the Lord. This is that which I impart to them as their justification, says the Lord. What an amazing verse. And I know we are running out of time. Can you stay just a minute more? And if you uh, would like to stay with me just a minute more, I want you to flip over to Deuteronomy. And sometimes the ads come up, but I just close that ad. And let's flip over to the book of Deuteronomy, verse uh, chapter 21. Chapter 21, verse 5. So I clicked on 21 after I got the book of Deuteronomy. Now I clicked on verse 5, and it's come up. And I just want to read the whole verse to you, and then uh, we'll look up a few of the Hebrew words uh, through the Strong's. Are you understanding how we do this now? I hope so. And it reads this way, and the priests. Now, why are we priests? Because Jesus said in Revelation 1 verse 6, For I have made you a king and a priest. You're not a priest by natural bloodline. You're a priest by holy, heavenly, eternal bloodline. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all, right, all unrighteousness, and it puts you in possession, possession of the rightness of God, which is positioned you for kings and priests. So when it says here, and the priest, that is you because of the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood is your blood. You no longer have to accept any natural bloodline, any natural sin, any natural addiction, any natural sickness. 
no longer yours for divine blood runs through your veins you are already a king and a priest revelation 1 verse 6 and the priests the sons of levi shall come near that's us we have the secret place, Matthew 6, 6. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. We can come running into the arms of our Father who is waiting for us in the secret place. You shall come near. You can draw near to God and he will draw near to you, James. That's in the book of James. Now, for the Lord your God has chosen them, them who, them priests, he has chosen us to minister to him. That's why when I teach in worship school, I teach you that you're not ministering to the people. You're ministering to the Lord, and they are welcome to minister to the Lord with you. We, the priests of the Lord, the sons of Levi, we draw near to God. We don't stand in the outer court. We don't stand in the inner court. We become the veil. We face the presence of God. We are cleansed by the fire of his presence, and we minister to the Lord. We minister to the Lord. He has chosen us to minister to him and to bless in the name of, of his and the presence. We bless in the name of of Jesus. We bless in the name of Yahweh. We bless in the name of Yeshua. We bless in the name of Elohim. We bless in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it says, and presence. So we bless in the name and we bless in the presence of the Lord. We don't bless from afar. We are in his presence and we bless his holy name, and we minister directly to him. And because of that, by my word, your word in the legal court of heaven, shall every controversy and every assault against you, it will be settled by your word. You see why it's so important that you understand how to pray, that you understand how to pray the word of God standing in the court of heaven before the righteous judge. When you understand your position, every controversy and every assault, and uh, one translation, I sent this to my cousin Bill, and he said, it, in his Bible it says lawsuit. So every time the devil drags you into court and accuses you and tries to bring a, a lawsuit against you in the court of heaven, by your word, you will be justified. By your word and the word of God in you, you can settle every assault and you can settle every controversy. Now, let's just look very quickly at what this means. The priest means uh, the, the Kohen or the Kohane is pronounced, and it literally means a, an officiating, one who officiates, a priest, also an acting priest, sometimes a layman. See, oh, 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 we started out as layman, but through the blood of Jesus, we don't earn our priesthood, we accept it. Chief ruler, own, a, as in O-W-N, own, priest, prince, principal officer, priest on, chief ruler, officer, prince. That's you in the court of heaven. That's you on the earth. And then he talks about sons. We know that's the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And then Levi, we know, is the one of the tribe, the one tribe of Israel that all the priest's bloodline came through. They shall come near. That word near means to be or to come near for any purpose. Glory to God. It means to worship. Glory to God. When it says to come near, you come near to God to worship. Glory, 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 glory. And there's so many other words there. Let's just keep reading as we close because I don't want to go too long. For them, uh, the Lord and God, two different words. Lord is uh, Yehovah. And then God is Elohim. And then has chosen, he's chosen, 977, let me come back here, ah, let me see if I can get rid of that. He has chosen, there it is, a primitive root properly 
You've been selected. You've been appointed. You've been chosen. You've, you are excellent. You've been joined to. You are required by God. He chooses you. And to minister, the word minister means to attend as a, as a worshiper. Don't come before the Lord not worshiping him. Don't come all frantic with your fear and your anxiety and your panic. Come with the peace of God. Shalom is your greeting. You come worshiping him with thanksgiving and you come with praise. You minister to him. You wait upon the Lord. You serve him. You, you, are, uh, you are waiting upon him and every need that he has, you are taking care of it. Uh, so you, we do that in, we also minister to him and then we bless him. That's the word barak. It is, means to kneel uh, by implication to bless God as an act of adoration. We adore him when we worship. We adore him when we pray. Even when we come to uh, clear our name in the court of heaven, we do it with adoration for him, with thanksgiving. We do it with praise. We bless him. It means to um, bring, uh, also it means to bless, to salute, uh, blessing, praise, kneel down, congratulate, kneel, and make to kneel. So many beautiful words comes out of this. And by our word, that is the Hebrew number 6310. It means the mouth as the meaning of blowing by our word, whether literally or figuratively, specifically, the portion or side with preposition according to. Uh, it is so very good i agree glory to god it's the mouth it is the commandment it is the edge it is the word it is your divine appointment it is your portion glory to god now we can just keep going we can take every word apart but every controversy that word there means a contest a legal contest adversary cause chiding contend controversy multitude from the margin pleading strife strive a lawsuit cause strife controversy contention every one of those controversies and every stroke that word stroke means every blow that the enemy tries to bring against you every spot that he tries to put on you for he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Every time the devil tries to put a spot on your reputation or a spot on you as a righteous person, a plague, a sore, a stricken, a stripe, a stroke, a wound, every time this happens, a plague, a sore, a stroke, a stripe, a stricken, a wound, every time it happens, you shall be able to show by your word, your, by your mouth, you will be able to shut it down in the name of Jesus. Now, I hope this has blessed you today. I hope it has encouraged you and empowered you through the word of God that you have legal right to stand before the court of heaven. You have a legal right to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You have a legal right to stand your ground and shut down the accuser of the brethren. You do it with the word of God. You can shut down every assault. You can shut down every controversy. You can shut down every accusation accusation that is coming against you and you do it not in the natural don't waste your time fighting people in the natural for we our weapons are not weapons of warfare against people but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds take the devil to court and shut him down playing many times people that don't even realize they are yielding their instrument to wickedness. We go to the court of heaven and we plead our case before our righteous judge who is already for us, hoping that we will get in the word and understand that this is a legal way to live before God set everything up legally. We are given the Ten Commandments. This is called the last will and testament that he's left us every word to fight the enemy with and we can win each and every time, every controversy, every lawsuit, and every assault against us, we can win in the court of heaven before a righteous judge who is already in our favor. And he wants us to not be ignorant children that don't know how to win. He wants us to be informed 
revealed the revelatory way to live this life in victory every day using God's word before us. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I love teaching, as you can tell. I do love it. Now, let me see if there's anything here that, uh, hi, sweet Laura, hi, Charlie, hi, Patricia, all of you that are with me today. Hi, Tiffany, so good to see all of you. Hi, Debbie, it is so good to see. Hi, Vanessa, and so good, uh, Cassandra, uh, so good to see you. Um, oh, you didn't get your notification. You better cl click it again just to be sure. Now, that's why we should guard our words, Miss Sims. That's exactly right. I was just reading that in the Three Stages book. You know, I don't know if anybody realizes, but I did one book with um, audio, audio. The audio book for Three Stages of Life. Uh, Laura recorded it and put music behind it, and it's really a great, so if you're an auditory listener, we've done one audio book. It's available on our website, along with Women of the Nation, along with Holy Spirit. You can go right in and order what you need. You can also click on the store, uh, place on the toolbar, and it'll drop down. It'll say ministry, but it'll also jewelry. You can order for birthdays and, and uh, getting ready for Christmas. And uh, I'm getting some new things up on there soon. But also reminding you, the school of worship that we had in Wilmington went wonderful and I'm so glad so many of you were actually there don't forget the school of the Holy Spirit coming up in Visalia California that is June the 9th just a couple of weeks from now and we are already over 30 so I'm excited but I'm expecting 50 because that's the number of the Holy Spirit and so I would love it if some of you would make the drive with me a little bit north of Los Angeles about three hours north of Los Angeles in Visalia, California. I think it's like an hour and a half above Bakersfield, if I've got that right. And uh, we've been there many times with the wonderful Praise Center, Pastors, Author, and Peggy Escobedo. I know many of you who are with me right now are already going to drive up and join me. I would love it if you would. I would appreciate it if you would come and be a part of that. It's a two-day school, Friday and Saturday. June the 9th and June the 10th, and then we'll be staying over on Sunday, and we'll be doing three services there on Sunday. We do a serve, we do the English service, and then we do the Spanish service. And so excited about that, excited about being with you. If you're not registered that, for that school, uh, please get registered for that school and join me if you can. And then, uh, just so you know, I don't have the date in front of me, but we have already made the school for um, School of the Holy Spirit in Gainesville, Texas in September. I'll be giving you those dates soon. So if you are anywhere uh, from Texas over, I would love it if you would join me in Gainesville. It's just right at an hour uh, above Dallas, not quite an hour above Dallas. Uh, easy to get to. Charlie, you and Dylan have come several times. Uh, Susan and Carol and Tom and so many drive in from there and Brian comes in from Oklahoma. And so let's make that a great school too. School of the Holy Spirit in Texas coming up in September. I am working on a location and I've had someone tell me that, that, that they would help me pay for the rental of a location. And so I am working on a school, a five-day school in August. So hopefully we'll be able to announce soon here in the Rancho Mirage area, we'll have a school of, uh, of worship, a five-day school of worship this summer. It'll be in August this year uh, if I can um, secure the location. For whatever reason, they want a lot of money for, uh, for me to rent the building this year, and I am very... Uh, careful with God's money and um, just because they ask for it doesn't mean that I'm supposed to give it. So when they asked so much, I started praying and I told the Lord, if you want me to rent these buildings, then uh, you, you're going to have to provide the finances, which he always takes care of us. And someone reached out to me and said that she would pay for uh, the rental of the building, uh, which she doesn't know how much it is. So I, I'm believing God for someone else to help me there. And also, I'm believing God for a building. 
I believe that someone in this area has a building that they want to give me so that we can use it for our ministry. We can use it for our schools. You never know. We might just launch a church. So I'm expecting God to do that. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you all for joining me today. And I have so many. We will close up today with our prayer time. And for those of you who can hang in here with me, I appreciate it. I'm probably already over uh, an hour. Forgive me. But I wanted to get this across. I'm going to call the names out. I'll do this also again in our next one. But as I call these names out, please, as intercessors, join the names and put them in the comments as the Lord instructs you. From Melinda... Uh, Wait, W-A-I-T, uh, needs a miracle healing from cancer. Um, she's a young wife and mother, so Wait uh, needs healing from cancer. Let's put her name in the comments, please. Uh, also, uh, Pastor Tom uh, was just admitted to the hospital, told he had cancer uh, in his eye, uh, and he needs face reconstruction, so uh, please pray for Pastor Tom, also for friends of Tammy's, Matt and Christine's little boy, Aiden, um, who is uh, almost three, and uh, we are praying for him, and Elizabeth is uh, asking uh, for prayer for Tyler, um, who has had COVID four times, and uh, other issues, and for a beautiful granddaughter, Jaden, suffers from anxiety and a poor self-image. And also for herself, uh, the McNallys, I pray for them. And uh, I'm glad, Elizabeth, that you enjoy getting the emails from us as an intercessor. Also, uh, Melinda is asking for prayer for Hank, a young man diagnosed with uh, lymphoma cancer. And... Uh, also, Brittany is asking uh, for prayer uh, for financial uh, needs uh, being met in the name of Jesus. And uh, Melanie Carlson uh, wanted to give us an update on her mom. This is Charlie's sister, Melanie. Um, she was in the hospital, and uh, God is touching her, and he is healing her, but uh, we believe for a uh, full manifestation uh, for Melanie's mom and Charlie's stepmom in Jesus name also um, Carmel is from Melbourne Australia and asking for surgery uh, prayers for her brother who is uh, scheduled for surgery in Australia uh, this past week and uh, the brother's name is Alfio so uh, let's pray for him, a uh, shoulder bone surgery on the left in Jesus' name. And also, uh, Charlie asks for prayer for his stepmother. That would be Shirley in uh, Jesus' name. That's the same one we were asking for prayer for. Let's keep praying for Connie Costley's son, Danny, and for Mahesh's son, and for Lisa Beck, and for Pastor Laura and Pastor Javier. Let's continue to pray for my mother. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Dave. Let's continue to pray for Mary Catherine and for Grandma Lala. Those are all of uh, my immediate prayer requests. Also, let's keep praying for Jean as she fights her way through some things right now. Deborah is asking for prayer for Connor, uh, a seven -year -old, her seven-year-old grandson who's had dental surgery. And Jean is also asking for prayer for her, ma her nephew, Matthew, and uh, we pray for Matthew, and we pray for him to live and not die. Iona is asking for prayer for healing and wholeness from diabetes in the name of Jesus. That's coming from uh, Portland, and then uh, we already prayed. I've already listed Carmel uh, asking for prayer for her brother, Alf, and uh, Eric Anderson. We've been praying for the two sisters uh, two teenage sisters, Emma and Sophie, uh, both been airlifted to a trauma center, and they are both remarkable. Uh, they still have a long way to go, but let's keep praying for Emma and Sophie. But they are already both miracles in the name of Jesus. 
And uh, also we pray for uh, Cindy, who needs a miracle healing from stage four lung cancer. It's spread to the brain and other areas of the body. And Melinda says she's not sure if she's saved. Let's ask for salvation for every name that we're naming, but also for miracle signs and wonders to be manifesting in all the names that we're naming now. Uh, Mike having surgery uh, to remove blockage in intestines. This is earlier in the month. We're believing for miracles in that respect. In the name of Jesus, Father, you see every one of these prayer requests and you know every name that is named, even those names that I may have mispronounced or maybe missed a name. But Father, you know each and every prayer request that's been uttered as these prayer requests were typed and they were sent through SalemFamilyMinistries.org. Through the prayer requests, the intercessors have been praying. We continue to pray for miracles, signs, and wonders for each and every person who is named in the name of Jesus. We pray, we believe, we expect miracle reports from around the world in the name of Jesus and throughout this nation. And as we all say, America shall be saved in the name of Jesus. And Margie's asking a question and she's probably watching. Is the AMPC out of production? I don't know, Margie. I can't find it anymore. So I'm thinking maybe it is. And, and in the name of Jesus, and I'll answer your other question in our private text. Okay, I love you all with all of my heart. Thank you for hanging in here with me for an hour today. I'm sorry it's been two weeks since I've been here, but I will be back very quickly, and we will jump in maybe tomorrow or the next day with Ezekiel 29 as I finish my study on it. I hope this has been a great uh, lesson today of how to legally fight in the courtroom of heaven. With just two scriptures, you can see the power of God being on our side. No weapon formed against you shall break through to success. And with your own word, you get to settle every assault, every controversy, every word spoken against you. You get to settle it before the righteous judge. And when it's settled there, this earth will simply follow suit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace today and always. I love you. Don't forget our ministry. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video. And if you go back and watch the videos, please put your comments because all of that helps us in the algorithm of YouTube. Your blessing in my life. Thank you all partners. Thank you for your orders. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for being intercessors with our ministry. You are dearly loved. And I don't think if I, I don't know that I finished it, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace today and always. Shalom.